In 2005, a group of local activists recognized a needed presence at the Arizona Capitol to speak on behalf of its citizens to preserve our freedoms and created the Arizona Citizens Defense League. The AZCDL is made up of an all-volunteer, non-partisan, dedicated group of men and women who work full-time testifying at committee hearings, monitoring floor votes, lobbying heavily on behalf of our more than 20,000 members. Between legislative sessions, we look for ways to improve existing laws and meet with legislators on proposed bills to provide valuable insight from the Arizona citizens' perspective to ensure that our freedoms and liberties are preserved. If you want to protect your right to keep and bear arms in Arizona, then you want to join the Arizona Citizens Defense League. So for those of you that are just joining us, we're still waiting for uh, Charles Holler to announce that he's going to be kicking this stuff off. I kind of expected him to start at 11, so I don't know what's going on. So we're just going to grab random people. And here's a gentleman who, <laughs> oh, man, the first time I got to hear him speak and tell his story, uh, it resonated with me a lot because my, my father served in Vietnam from 67 through 69. And so as a younger man, he didn't share a lot with me. But as of recently, um, I've told him for years, I said, you need to write a book. He's been mentioned in a few books of people that have told, you know, their version of Vietnam or whatever. And they, they haven't gotten a lot of it historically accurate. Uh, there's some funny stories in there. But so I've been interviewing him because I think I get more information from him when the two of us are talking versus if he just is typing it up himself, because I get to ask a lot of questions because there's so much that was going on in that, during that time period. But thank you very much, Representative Wynn, for joining us. Thank you, sir. Uh, tell Thanks, everybody sir. about yourself. Yeah, um, I um, ran for office in 2021 okay. as a Republican in Legislative District 1, and, uh, you know, amazingly, I, I won. And uh, the first thing I did was uh, doing everything I can to protect the Second Amendment. You know how I feel about the Second Amendment. Yeah. Um, what I love about the Second Amendment is the fact that I grew up with that one. Yeah. And I know what it's like losing a country to, uh, to communism. And, um, you know, I, I emigrated to the United States uh, after the fall of Saigon. And you and I talked quite a bit about it. And I'm actually working on a book right now. Wonderful. Uh, Wonderful. But, uh, but, you know, I was just telling uh, Dan over there earlier that, uh, you know, every day you wake up, there's a new article of how this administration is attacking the Second Amendment. Yeah. I mean, I can't even keep up. Uh, Mexico is planning to sue us again. Uh, but fortunately, the state of Arizona is well protected. Um, you can't sue industry. You can't sue, sue um, manufacturers. You yeah. can't sue distributors. You can't sue retailers anymore if a gun is unlawfully used. And so I I'm glad to be able to come back in continue to do this kind of work. What made you want to run to be a state representative? Why was it so important to you? Uh, you know what? Actually, it, it never crossed my mind until until a couple of people, friends, uh, one of them was Karen Fan. Yeah. Uh, the other one was Rusty Bowers. And they came to me and they said, you have a lot to give. Yeah. Uh, you, you need to do this. And I was thinking to myself, I have no name. I have a strange name. Yeah. Um, I look different than most people, yeah. uh, according to the left. You know, yeah. I'm a white nationalist, right? According to of course. to uh, Senator uh, Martin Quezada. Yeah. Uh, so I, you know, and uh -huh, I decided, yeah. you know, what? if I'm going to be labeled as an evil guy, might as well run um, and, and do something for the state. And very fortunate to be able to be in this great country. Yeah. I mean, you name a country where you can take a war refugee and say, you know what? One day you're going to be a state legislator. Right. It's amazing. Well, um, immigration is something that Arizona's familiar with, right? Right. And it's, it's been a thing all along. And I think the majority of Americans, we want to encourage immigration. We want, right. We want to encourage folks come here. Bring us your best, your brightest, et cetera. We would but do it the right everybody. way. But do it the right way. But do it the right way. Right. Because of folks such as yourself that you've come here and, you know, that American dream, you've chased it, you've gone after it, you've got it. And, you know, you're raising your children with your, your history. I mean, you got to talk about your daughter. What an amazing girl. What is she doing right now? Well, I'll, I'll tell you what. Uh, opportunities and the American dreams, um, those are the things that are not guaranteed. No, no. Opportunities, you have to take it. Well, yeah, I would you say opportunity is guaranteed, yeah. it's, but, they're, but you're not, right. uh, but you, you don't take advantage of it. Then you, exactly. Yeah. And so you asked by my, my daughter, thank you very much for asking. 
Uh, she graduated from the Naval Academy back in 21. Okay. Uh, she got her master's degree at the Naval Postgraduate School just last June. Nice. She's in South Carolina now, uh, uh, learning to, uh, doing the uh, the nuclear power school oh, okay. so that she could go to the fleet as a submariner. Oh, and wow. We're very proud. And wow. you know, here's a little girl that graduated from a, a tiny little high school out of Prescott, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and but, she, but she was a, a competition shooter? Yeah, she's a competition shooter. Okay, I knew you where you were going to go with that. Um, uh, I was one of the coaches, and I was really involved in a, the youth uh, yeah. shooting program in the state of Arizona. And one time, I was state director and state coordinator for the youth shooting programs. Wow. And she was a member and she is now a distinguished shooter for the U.S. Navy. Oh, I bet. We, I, Arizona has so many, ama- like, we have so many amazing opportunities here. Like, we have so many ranges that are owned by the state. We have so many right. privately owned ranges. There's a gun store in every single corner. So I know that, I mean, we have 7 million people that live here. Right. So there's a bunch of people in Arizona, and we have some of the best shooters in the country. And, I mean, you go down to a Monday competition or a Tuesday competition, like, you're competing against some of the best in the in the world. Right, right. You know, and... And those folks giving you little nuggets and stuff like that is just awesome. So like, there's no reason why you can't be successful and learn how to shoot good here in Arizona. Uh-huh, uh-huh. This is a gun state. This is a gun state. And if guns were um, a problem, you, you would have a it. huge problem. You right? would know it. But it is amazing. And I'm going to continue to work on this. Uh, you know, I think I have about five Second Amendment bills now or protective of the Second Amendment bill. Yeah. Uh, 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 coming up for this new session here i'm excited and by the way my new seat mate yeah. selena bliss yeah well-armed women yeah board member of arizona state rifle and pistol association okay you're gonna have two great people in the house of representatives working on behalf of the second amendment which is what we need more of yes sir yes sir now i'm late to the party i've only really been involved in seeing some of the legislative side going on since about 2019 mm-hmm. and it's because of what i've seen that I, I was like, okay, here's my qualities. Here's what I can try to bring to AZCDL to make it better. But tell us about those challenges. There's there's quite a few people, because I, I think a lot of people in Arizona feel like, oh, our gun rights are safe. They're fine. Like, I don't need to worry about it. And I, I really want to see more of them get involved in the AZCDL because uh, this is the one group that really helps you accomplish your tasks right. moving your bills along. Right. So, like, tell us about the challenges you've been facing. How has AZCDL helped? You know, it's amazing. And, and um, you know, by now, I miss David Copper writing. Yeah, he, he was there at every committee supporting my bills. Yeah. Okay. So I, you know, we put out bills. We do the best we can. We get everybody in. And everybody, please remember that we have such a thin margin of Republicans. Yeah. 31, 29 in the House, 16, 14 in the Senate. Yeah. There is no reason why Arizona should have just a barely one vote margin in each chamber. And that's the challenge I have. So a couple of my bills only took one Republican to go against, and there goes the bill. Yeah. So hopefully when I come back, if I come back in January, yeah. hopefully we'll have more than 32 to to compensate for the one Republican that may walk off the path. Yeah. I never did understand why a Republican would walk off the path on a Second Amendment bill. And I have to tell you this. As a legislator, every other legislator that I met, Republicans will tell you I support the Second Amendment. But when it comes to getting involved with the ASRPA, AZCDL, the NSSF, the NRA, yeah. actually getting involved with legislation it's, it's a lot smaller. Right. Now, I'll probably have Mike Hinton zone on later um, during the lunch break to tell us, because I know that his his group puts out a group, uh, it just a just the facts page that shows where Republicans and Democrats sit voting yes or no towards gun legislation. So I want to make sure I pass all that information out, but it's super important you guys review that when I do post it, and I'll definitely put a link in here for it too later on, um, because that will help folks identify who in which district probably need to get replaced with somebody that's more pro-gun right because right. that will help right. you get your job done and if you guys are living in his district you come up for election again when um november 8th here okay. um, coming back for my uh, second round so it's this one yes this oh, it's one. this one all yeah. right so hopefully you know there are enough people out there come out to support 
and and by the way, I'm not just a single issue guy. Oh, yeah. I came down there as a second a Second Amendment guy, but in actuality, I passed bill on, um, you know, religious freedom, yeah, uh, patient rights, uh, civic education. You know, all those things that I've been doing outside of just the Second Amendment. Yeah. So I'm not a single issue guy. And again, you know. The, the fact that Dave was always there, Michael was always there, Cheryl was always there in every committee. Yeah. And what you really have to understand is the left will twist the bill yeah. to where, you know, I'm supposed to be bringing guns into second grade class. You know, oh, yeah, they uh, love to twist things. Exactly. And so it's nothing. Teachers are going to leave guns in the bathroom. Teachers are going to have it fall out of their holster. Uh, teachers are going to shoot themselves or accidentally shoot a kid. Like They bring the worst case scenario. Right. Right. Where show me the case. Right. Show me the case where that's ever happened. Right. There's many states that already allow firearms on campus. And I don't want to go down the road, but I mean, we have not had a problem with firearms on campus until they passed the federal legislation in the 90s, uh, demanding that you had to have a CCW from the state and that state had to approve it. And so now we're, it's it's always a constant battle to undo the stupid stuff. Yeah. You, you know, I brought up a bill, CCW uh, for college campus. Right. Right. For employees. And register students. Which you're probably going to have an even tougher time challenge this year because a person that didn't go to a school just recently at ASU mm -hmm. came and took revenge on one of the college professors. Right. And right. that's going to that's gonna be brought up and that's going to make that, that bill even tougher for you to fight. Yeah, but forward. think about it. What if the professor... Or one of the students was armed. There you go. There what you if a good it. guy had a gun on campus? And, and you know. And by the way, on that particular bill, we have 11 years of data of zero incident reports, right? right? State of Texas, state of Utah, state of Colorado. Yeah. If you have 11 years of no incidents with CCW carriers, right? Right. Why would you have them now in the state of Arizona? Are we somewhat more dumb than the other three states right I, I don't know i don't know but, either but thank you so much when it's always a pleasure to see thank you, you sir guys representative win district one there's a lot of district districts one so if you guys live in district one and know someone that does call him up make sure that this gentleman gets reelected. he has done a lot for and helped arizona citizens eventually protect your second amendment rights thank you for sitting down with us i, I know that you weren't even like here to speak today but getting to see you getting you on camera so these folks know what it is that you're doing, I greatly appreciate it. I appreciate it's always it. Thank a pleasure. you, sir. Thank you for I your I can't service. wait to see you again. Right. Thank you. Take care.